Hello, 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 hello. Uh, I'm back this week, okay? And uh, I'm, uh, like I promised, I'll try to do uh, much more live streams since I don't have as much. I sent my project away and uh, taken a little gap or little rest, I should say. And uh, uh, last week I did the live stream and the question I had to answer it's a common question about the movement of the wood. So I don't want to repeat, but I guess I missed something. I missed uh, uh, one part and one of the comments helped me to remember. Yes, uh, <laughs> uh, when you're doing a live stream, you really don't remember everything. And I'll try to do uh, better this time than last time. Uh, the, the, the question is the same but I'll try to do a uh, version 2. It's not exactly the same like last video. I don't think it's going to be the same. A little deeper, okay? I'll try to answer a little deeper. I'm not sure if, uh, even if it's possible or not. Uh, but uh, while everyone is uh, connecting, let me see uh, who's connected. James, John, Parker, uh, Spartacus. Good to see you people. And uh, if I'm not going to catch everyone, uh, sometimes I do have a glitch. Uh, doesn't show, uh, you know, all the comments. I mean, my computer, for some reason, later on, I'll still going to catch. So if you do have something to say, I would really appreciate just comment and uh, ask me questions or just give me an answer, your opinion, which is I'm fine. Uh, this piece, what I'm uh, kind of digging, it is a piece we worked on in one of the classes in state of Maine in Williams Brown School. And uh, the, the carving itself is actually Grilling Gibbons. It's a true Grilling Gibbons. It is not done. Okay, so we didn't have a chance to get it done uh, when we worked on it. Let me show that a little better to you. I'm not sure if you're going to be uh, seeing that better or not. Uh, so we didn't finish it and we didn't expect to finish it because uh, it's like, I don't know, uh, that project should take about at least four or five weeks full time because it's a full 3D. We're talking about, I don't know, like six inches total, I mean, all together uh, to that point. And that's uh, really a lot of excavation. Uh, we did uh, main excavation preliminary idea and uh, I gonna carve it home in my shop in my studio and finish it but the question today is the same like uh, last time let me see and say hello Bernie good to see you Richard I said right I think uh, Richard is saying the oak leaves and the acorns behind you should be at school lesson as well I just love that uh, those ones, yeah, they look good, but uh, it's not, uh, I did not film it. Maybe someday I will film it, but that is uh, one of the advantages to take the classes in person with me. But this one, this one, hold on just a second, let me hold it a little closer to you, is also a really good uh, project. I'm going to change it, okay? I'm going to change probably background. I'm going to excavate much deeper and uh, uh, get much better details and so on. Let me show that a little closer to you on this camera. I, I hope it shows better. And I should smile. <laughs> okay. So, but uh, let me get back to question. The question is, uh, we all know wood is excellent material. I love how it smells. I love the grain, but it has a weakness for at least about 10, 15 years. Okay. Uh, when you buy a brand new piece of lumber or timber, if you're in England, uh, it could be dry. It could be kiln dry but the, the, the fibers itself still fresh. They are not dead. They're not uh, stabilized yet. 
And for example, if you do have a, a chance to dry that, place it somewhere like I do. I keep uh, my lumber. Uh, I do have a sauna and right on top of the sauna, I have a whole stack of uh, uh, material. And I keep it for years. Some of the pieces like the ones, uh, those fibers, uh, you know, seasonal expansion and you know, it's puffing, it's going back, puffing, going back. It all depends, of course, uh, on the weather outside, winter, summer. It's not as much in Florida, by the way, because uh, it's always humid. Uh, summer, winter, it's always hot and humid. So it, it doesn't really, you know, doesn't really move as much. I mean, that's what I noticed. Maybe I'm wrong. But still, uh, if you do have a seasons, uh, wood will adapt to environment and it's gonna move okay and it's not only gonna move it's gonna cup it's gonna warp it's gonna twist it's gonna do all crazy stuff all kind of uh, movements in the last video i i told you my opinion which uh, i'm not sure if it's uh, the right opinion but it's my opinion you don't have to agree with that if you work on a like on a full 3D, like a really thick piece of wood, and you have a, a lots of excavation. Like for example, in a piece like that, uh, behind me, I have a lot of excavation right underneath, right, you know, just a really deep excavations. Uh, you are breaking that force. Uh, let me explain that one more time. Okay, what happens? Why wood itself moving? Maybe I'm going to do a much better job. I don't know. Maybe. I, I hope I'm going to do a much better job this time. But let me grab uh, my iPad and I will... Let me check if I'm connected. And I hope I am. Yes, I am. And let me do some drawing for you. Okay. Get rid of my gouge let me see good at the, uh, good afternoon good afternoon and maybe I missed someone else but uh, let me uh, let me explain okay so uh, what is piece of wood what is piece of wood I hope you can see okay so that would be my piece of lumber okay so that would be my piece of lumber so that's a piece of wood you can imagine now uh, you have to understand and you probably most likely do understand uh, there is a different uh, way uh, those lumber yards not the lumber yards but uh, people who's actually slicing uh, the wood before it gets to the lumber yard uh, there's a different type of cuts okay uh, there's a plain cut, there's a, a quarter sewn cut, there's a reef cut, multiple different cuts, okay? Now, uh, and uh, when you look at the piece of wood sewn, uh, it's gonna look, uh, if you look at the edge, uh, the grain gonna look really consistent like this, okay? So that would be a quarter sewn. Okay, so that would be a quarter sewn uh, lumber. Let me wipe it. And uh, obviously, it is always, always, always uh, the best option. Always the best option to have a quarter sewn uh, uh, lumber. So, but most likely, when you buy in the wood, it's not going to be quarter sewn. Okay? And I have to explain um, uh, what's the plane. Most likely, it's going to be just a plain uh, cut. Okay? So, and how it looks. So, here's going to be my second board. And uh, when you look at the edge, the plain cut gonna look like this. Okay. Most of the warping happens actually on a plain cut wood. Most of the twisting, cupping, and all kind of crazy stuff happens actually on uh, that uh, that type of cut. Okay, so that would be a plane. If I can 
actually spell it. <laughs> okay, but anyway, so let me change the color and I'll uh, just to try to uh, give you a logic, okay? So what happens inside? Uh, so what is wood? Wood is uh, a lot of different um, straws, like a drinking straws, and they are going with the direction of those rings. Okay, so they are going to the direction, which is, uh, I'm not going to draw everywhere, but what happens? Okay, so those are just uh, uh, drinking straws. Just imagine like when you go to McDonald's and there's a straw and you got the bunch of straws. It's actually a pipes uh, or pipe system inside of the, you know, piece of lumber, piece of wood. Uh, and the juice used to be, uh, you know, going back and forth inside of the wood through those straws. Uh, when you cut that wood, you just uh, cut those uh, resources. There's no more juice and the wood starts drying out. So, which means uh, right uh, uh, between those spots, let me change the color. Between those spots, let me do green, just a crazy. So it's gonna dry out all of those spaces. And what, what's gonna happen, everything, everything gonna be pulled toward the center. That would be like heart somewhere. So from those directions and those directions coming from all of the sides. At least uh, that is how I understand, okay? And I hope it uh, makes sense. Let me see. I hope it makes sense. <laughs> My question is, when you look at that uh, uh, piece of wood, what direction it's gonna warp? What direction it's gonna move, okay? Uh, uh, the force is actually going from all of the uh, direction toward the center. And it's just a drying, 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 and, you know, just drying out. And, uh, you know, it starts moving either up or down. So look at that picture and tell me what direction should it move. Let me change the color and I'll try to do logical okay if everything is dried right between those and all the force goes uh, uh, toward the center most logically uh, the warping gonna happen opposite direction so it's gonna work like that okay so your board at the end gonna look like this okay and I hope uh, it makes sense okay so that is how it's gonna look so, my answer, what I gave in last video, what side you should attack that piece from, okay? Uh, so, is that better to attack uh, the, that from this side or from the opposite side? The answer is actually easy, okay? If, if you're working on a full uh, 3D like that, uh, I'm talking about really thick piece of wood, so it's not the big deal at all. So it really doesn't, in my opinion, it doesn't really matter because you excavate a lot, you're removing a lot of fibers, you're removing a lot of, you break those straws, there's no more force. It will move, but it's not going to move as much. It's not going to uh, cop as crazy, it's not going to warp as, as much. It will, a little bit, but not much. Uh, but what I did not tell in depth last week, uh, uh, let's say if you're not working in a full 3D, you don't do a lots of excavation, uh, but you do work on a panel like uh, a furniture panel, like panel like this, okay? Uh, that panel is um, only about, uh, I don't know, maybe a quarter inch, maybe a maybe five sixteenths of an inch, something like that. So we're talking about six millimeters or seven millimeters the most. I don't have too much warping on that. It's a kind of dry. It's a walnut, excellent wood, by the way, for the carving. That is a furniture panel, 18th century style. And I mentioned in last video, 
if you're working on a relief carving, if the excavation is not as deep, the wood is, I mean, wood has a tendency to move. Uh, and the question is legit from what side you should attack. Okay, let me go back to my drawing. Okay, let's say, well, let me get a little better color. Okay, let's say that is your board. Okay, by the way, by the way, I probably should mention, um, it all depends, of course, what type of woodworking you do. Uh, I spoke with one of the uh, woodworkers. Uh, he is an excellent uh, furniture maker, uh, 18th century re reproduction furniture maker, I should say. And he said, I always try to get solid piece of wood, just like, you know, solid, like big panel, even if, it, even if it's for the sides. So he tries to get a really solid piece, as wide as he could. Uh, it's good if you can get it, but most likely uh, lumber yards they don't have uh, the really, really, you know, like a wide boards. Uh, the most you can get nowadays uh, nine inches, ten inches, maybe twelve inches once in a while. If you're lucky, you can get fourteen inches. But what about if you need to, to get the full panel? Uh, obviously, the solution would be best to just uh, laminate and flip flop the orientation uh, you know of the crane and it's gonna look like that so when you just glue in those pieces let's say that board gonna be a grain direction that direction and another board gonna go opposite direction and another board gonna go this direction okay so that would be probably the best solution of course well not the best but one of the best the best of course uh, uh, Quarter zone, okay? Quarter zone is uh, always the best. It's, uh, it doesn't move as much. It's still gonna move, but not, not as much. But what about if you don't have, uh, uh, you know, uh, that taste for the <laughs> gluing up pieces together and you're still like a high-end uh, woodworker and you wanna just uh, carve the panel like a solid panel like this and uh, you are able to find solid piece and you know it's not rift cut or quarter sewn and your wood is going to look like you know the long one and the grain going to go this way and like i said uh, it's going to cup opposite direction that direction so from what side are you supposed to attack from above or from below so should you just go opposite direction like that or like this okay uh, think about logically the force you have to break that force everything goes uh, to the center okay to the heart of the wood it dries out inside from outside going in and you have to break that force for me the answer is easy if it is a relief carving it is always, always better to carve uh, uh, just to take that force. The hard side of the wood gonna be my surface I gonna carve out. Let me show that here. So which means this way, okay? So all my carving gonna happen on this side. I am breaking that center, okay, that force. So it's not gonna move any longer too much to the center. So let me do it one more time for you would just understand what I mean by that. So if you have a piece of wood, piece of lumber, so, and uh, I gonna draw the plane cut, I gonna draw my crane direction that way. So this side, the upper side, that is going to be my carving, okay? Because I try to break that force from here, so I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to carve on that on the opposite side because uh, you're breaking outer force, but not inner. Everything you're just pulling toward the center. I hope it makes sense, people. Uh, I'm not trying to be smart, but uh, I've done that uh, for a while. 
and I know it's going to work. You can see the result right here, okay? Uh, so absolutely zero, zero. If you look uh, at the uh, side, there's absolutely zero movement, okay? So absolutely zero movement. Yeah, it is um, uh, glued two panels together. It's a book matched on the back side. You can see it. But still, if I look at the grain, uh, you know, it's logically it's supposed to move, but it doesn't because I attacked it from the right position. I mean, from the right side. I hope it answers. Thank you very much. Let me see uh, who connected. And uh, let me report some spam. I just blocked that spam. I, I don't like when people spamming, okay? Hello, Kevin. Hello, Fabio. Fabio, you are doing a great job, by the way. Uh, I really enjoy when you submit your work uh, to my school and you're doing a great job. And you like carving machine. You're just doing so much. I, I have to keep up, keep up with you. Now, uh, wonderful people, just to go ahead and check um, uh, my schedule for the next year. I already placed some of the classes uh, online. Uh, you can just go to woodcarving.com. Uh, check the menu and in menu uh, it would be in-person classes. I've got already scheduled uh, uh, pretty much all the way to the fall. Uh, the first class is going to happen in February. It's going to be um, in the winter time in uh, Austin, Texas. And uh, some people already, you know, just uh, getting spots. If you want to get uh, something crazy, I'm not, like I said, if you expect that I'm filming every time when I'm doing the classes, you're going to be wrong. So I'm not, okay? So some of the stuff, it's done only in person, and I'm not filming it. Uh, so Austin's going to be first. Then uh, I'm going to have multiple classes in Mark Adams School. I'm going to be also in Maine, in Williams Brown School. It's a main course workshops. Uh, just to check uh, that website, schoolofwoodcarving.com, go to menu, uh, to in-person classes, and you will find the URL. You can find the, the web address, and you can just uh, go there and uh, uh, get your spot. Now, uh, I will, for the students of my school, I will uh, work uh, on this piece. I'm going to do some changes. Uh, like I said, that is based on the Grillen Gibbons style. It's a true his design, by the way. It's not uh, made up uh, by anyone. It's just a true uh, his piece. I'm going to do uh, some changes. I'm going to do some more excavations, and it's going to be available uh, online. I also have a new, uh, somewhat like a beginner's project, uh, this project. Uh, it's a butterfly plate. I, I kind of like that. Okay, so it's a butterfly plate. You know, and that is the ancient uh, style. It's not done yet. I'm still filming it, but it's also available uh, on online school of woodcarving.com. Thank you very much, wonderful people. Let me check uh, uh, who else there. Okay. That is enough for today. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And uh, please like it, comment. I really do appreciate it. It means a lot. Uh, you don't have to, of course, but uh, it makes you know me feel good. So that is not in vain. Uh, if you do have uh, more questions, please ask me. Uh, don't email me. Just uh, comment. It's better because I'm losing those emails. I'm getting so many emails and I'm not uh, uh, sometimes even checking, you know, until it's like 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 and then I just, you know, select all almost and just delete them, okay? Just the comment. I check the comments. It's a lot less comments here and also in school, okay? Have a good one. Thank you very much.